everyone, Joe here from ActionX. Welcome to What's in the Tube. Welcome back. If this is your 12th rookie season five episode review, and I gotta start it off by saying, okay, are you happy now? I, I told you patience was a virtue. I really was hoping for like end of season, but I was wrong. You, you know what you have, oh, you know, I'm trying to prevent what I'm talking about. But anywho, um, this week's episode of the rookie, honestly, again, another solid one. It was great. They definitely, um, w once again, played to the strengths of just tapping into the past of the rookie, thinking of the future, giving some payoffs. And for me, if some of you remember, when I well, I didn't review the pilot live, I, I talked about the, pi the pilot before, where I initially thought, for some reason, Chen and Bradford were going to hook up by the end of the first episode. For some reason. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. And now, here we are... More than four and a half seasons in, well, for more than four and a half seasons after that prediction I made, it happened. Um, it's not a spoiler, it's what everyone's been waiting for. People thought it was going to be last week's episode, but it wasn't. And I thought, okay, you know what? Okay. <laughs> I, I feel like people were just like, really like, they... I don't know what it, it was. It had to be natural. It had to be. And honestly, right now it it still does feel natural. They are tackling the problems that they would, and now it's it putting them in pretty interesting positions going into the um the future of the of the seat of this season and hopefully the show that will I'll, I'll come to quest question what is going to happen next. Uh, but with that being said, I want to get into into. I want to get into it because it was a pretty entertaining episode besides that one interesting factoid. Uh, but let's go into the Butcher Recap and talk about this week's episode of The Rookie. So we begin uh, with Kelly Clarkson. Um, I The only reason why I know of her because A, they were promoting the hell out of her in the sh in the promos leading, uh, leading up to this week. Um, the Rookie cast were on, were on the Kelly Clarkson show and she was posting a lot of be be uh, behind the scenes footage from it. And I'm like thinking to myself that, okay, was it really, I, I'm a little bit torn by the, if you don't understand me, like the only way I knew of Cl Kelly Clarkson was really from the reference in 40 year old virgin where um, Steve Carell's character gets, um, gets waxed and he just randomly yells out Ke Kelly Clarkson. Um, I'm pretty sure I've heard of her at other different types of show. I never seen a single thing with her until tonight. Um, it was a, a traditional rookie fair, like when it comes to like in house ABC or like just t night show crossovers, I guess. Um, it's very limited, it's just the one scene. I think people were just expecting her to have a bigger part in this episode because the wording of her saying, like, oh, this, I, this was my first scene, so maybe there's a deleted scene with a second scene. I really don't know what's going on. So, the open, open call was like all the main rookie cast. Sands Wesley um, meeting um, Kelly Clarkson in a very weird, uh, in, in a w very weird elevator meeting after some sort of like very big um, incident that occurred with all of them on him, which I'm like, that would have been an interesting episode. But I'm like, okay, you know what? We're going to skip that over. And then we cut to it. We're back. Um, I want to say, yeah, we head back over to Lucy's apartment where tomorrow, at for her first appearance in like weeks or months, in, in my opinion, um, is doing some yoga. You know, Lucy comes back out, getting ready for her shift. Uh, tomorrow, teases her like, oh, you came home pretty late last night. And she's like, oh, I trivia night went long, which I'm like, there absolutely is no way trivia night for any bar is going to go into 1 a.m. in the morning. That's a fact. Um, however, tomorrow's like, yeah, I already saw you, Tim, you coming out of Tim's car last night, which I'm like, tomorrow's a smart egg. She really is a smart egg, you know. Uh, and Lucy's like, finally, I can actually talk to someone about this. But it's not really much of a talk. It's more along the lines of, they're still figuring things out. They want to do things super slow, and they don't want to, like, you know, rush things. Because, again, they have a whole uh, work thing to deal with, which, again, they don't want to really talk about yet until... They figure out the the T's and I's of their own relationship. And then tomorrow, obviously, teases her about, like, oh, have you, you know, have you two finally, you know, shacked up yet? And Lucy's like, no, they haven't yet. They're taking it slow. Um, but it could be any moment now. Like, you know, it's been a few weeks of dating. And again, everyone is different in the in dating that, you know, you don't really have to, like, follow. Like, like for me growing up, I felt like, okay, three months was traditional like my way of like thinking of like yeah three months would be enough to like you know 
eventually consider about that that next step. It depends. Every couple's different. There's there's no real universal trend. And you know, Lucy thinks about this a little bit. So uh, when he meets when she meets up with with Bradford later, she says, "Yeah, tonight tonight's night. We're gonna do it." And Bradford's like, "Okay, great. It's gonna be my place or your place." And and then she has to drop like, "Yeah, tomorrow knows." And Bradford's like, "Oh, come on. We we promised no one was gonna know until at least X amount of months into the same." But she's like, no, she figured it out herself, and uh, she's going to be staying at a friend's place tonight, so we have the whole apartment to ourselves, which means, yes, they're going to shack up finally. It's what everyone's been waiting for, but great for a little wrench in the pile, as um, Aaron has been called away by Lopez and Harper to go do, an, uh, to do a surveillance assignment for the day, so Lucy's going to be paired up with Bradford. And which is like, okay, but also like, okay, you just literally drop, we're going to have sex. Tonight, it, it's it's not something you announce unless there's like a bit of a separation. If you know what I mean, like there, you don't really drop that big 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 piece of news and then immediately like talk about it some more. You're like, you know what? Great. Well, I'll see you later. And then like, nope, see you later. Is now a full ten hour shift, which is like, oh god. And they haven't worked. This is the first time they. I think this is the first time they've done a shift as a couple. I know there's some contradictions with feds. And everything with that timeline, so I'm like, that's a little weird. But like, for in my case, it, from what I'm thinking, it's um, actually, what was I thinking? Yeah, because the timeline for everything is so kind of weird. In my opinion, I'm not even sure. I I already lost my my train of thought. Moving on. Um, meanwhile, Nolan and um Selena gets called in for a special assignment today. They're going to be chaperoning a pretty high threat target. At the hospital, um, undergoing a procedure, and no one's like, "Who can be that dangerous for us to, to like, you know, request presence?" It's none other than Oscar. Would you know? Remember Oscar was uh, from I. I'm pretty sure he was in season one. It's I know I finally definitively reviewed season one, but I already forgot. I'm sorry. It's been like a long five months since I reviewed that season. Um, but yeah, but probably he was in season two's episode where. When we did that episode review many, many moons ago. My God, that was three years ago. Uh, when he stabbed Leslie. Uh, so that guy. And he's made appearances throughout the entire rookie uh, timeline since then. So this is like his seasonal appearance, which I'm like, I love him so much. Is this the way he like annoys everyone? Tries to con everyone? It's like, he, he doesn't come across as a believable guy. But then you you kind of listen a little bit. Like, yeah, this guy's telling the truth. Maybe. Uh, but anywho, yeah, so there, he's under assignment and no immediately, like, flips his shit over him and Selena's like, oh yeah, and I forgot, like, Selena doesn't know him, so it's like, it's, it, I love it when we get to that point in the show where, like, the new characters kind of ask about these old characters and then they have their own interactions with, it. it's, it's always nice, I always love that about, um, shows. Uh, anywho, so, no one's, uh, basically allowed to get as many cops as he wants to for this assignment. He pulls away literally eight officers and two detectives. That's how bad it is. And so he's like, do we really need this many people? He's like, we do. Because he has gone out of way worse situations before. And him just listing off everything that he's that he's done to the entire rookie fam. It's honestly pretty stunning to believe this man's even still alive. The fact that he's even still breathing is another question. Um, so the main reason that the surgery is taking place is that his daughter, which I think was introduced in season four, I want to say. I know this is a reprisal role. They've already met each other. So I think this is from season four. Um, that, yeah, so, uh, she is now clear. She's now free because I think she was assisting her dad for a little bit. Uh, but then, you know, now she's out on good behavior. She seems to get her life on track and then she needs a new kidney. Um, so her dad's volunteering his kidney to go help her, go help her out. Uh, however, the problem is, is that, um, obviously his da her dad's not cheap and she admits that uh, he's not doing it out of the kindness of his own heart. I'm paying him to do this. Hell, I'm still going to pay him after the kidney's removed, which I'm like, great. That's, uh. Equally great, but and also the doctor who will be performing this session is none other than Arrowverse alum, um, Lila Diggle. Uh, I know she had another uh, her, her original last name. I forgot. I, I forgot what it was. Um, but yeah, now she's here. She's a doctor, uh, which is funny because like we also had David Ramsey uh, pop in uh, about a few weeks ago on Feds or last year on Feds. So I'm like, you know what? Them welcoming in, welcoming in all these alums from all my shows from the past, it's amazing. I love the rookie universe. It's like, it's giving everyone more chances to, like, act. Uh, that's what I love about it. Um, so, yeah, so they go talk to the daughter. She's dating someone new already. And the guy seems to be like, yeah, you really could have done better. 
you really could have done better. Um, they go meet Oscar, which is, again, the first time they've seen each other in, in about a year. And, you know, it's it's all about knowing, like, I really want to... He really wants to punch him in, in the face, but he cannot. Uh, immediately, um, Oscar's getting into, like, trying to get into Selena's head about, you know, calling her sexy. And trying to, like, you know, imply th feelings of, like, you know, affairs and everything. And Selena's, like, doing her usual shit. Just looking at him and then starely, like, looking beyond him into his soul and, and predicts, You're gonna die someday. And it might be soon. Maybe today. Or tomorrow. And Oscar's, like... A very well-spoken man, but the thing is that he's never met Selena, and and you know none of the other rookie fam that has already accounted him has dealt with him like that. So like this is still new to him. So he's kind of more inclined to believe this, so to speak. Um, meanwhile, all the way back at the station, I forgot about about Aaron. Um, Aaron um, gets a sign over to Harper and Lopez, but before he gets to arrive, uh, Wesley's there pleading with uh, Harper to at least verify with him that the investigation is in good hands that even though he and lopez are not supposed to be near because of their uh, involvement with elijah that everything's going fine that everything's being handled correctly harper said i can't even confirm that part but rest assured we are working on it obviously the man literally caused us to get rid of two of his biggest um, competition away in one sitting so yeah this is something we're really paying attention to so don't worry about that so uh so he leaves Aaron comes in so they're about to go just do a pretty long stakeout uh, to a guy that's about to move some guns over. So that's literally the, the only information they're getting. So like, okay, yeah, they're just going to stay put for a while um, in the car. And this subplot's really not that long, to be honest with you. So I, I could cover this pretty easily. Um, so yeah, so we, we get over there. They're surrounding a nightclub or just his place of business. And they're just waiting there for basically the whole day. Uh, Lopez gets a little queasy, a little sick. So she goes into the, a nearby bathroom um, to, to go relieve herself i guess that's what she gives to harper that's the excuse but in reality she's gonna check a pregnancy test and which yes she is pregnant once again which i'm like thinking to myself there is such a thing as a vasectomy or there's also such a thing as birth control i don't know what the procedures are when after you get birth but like yeah yeah that's basically what i, what I have to say yeah she's pregnant again and obviously like this is exactly not what she planned because she agreed with with uh, Wesley that, yeah, we, we can have kids down the road, so to speak, again. But we're definitely not having it anytime soon. Fast forward two weeks later, and she's pregnant again. So again, you're welcome. Uh, Wesley gets what, gets what he wants. Uh, so lo so they stay put pretty much for the entire night. They really don't do anything much else until they like reach the end of the night. It's a nightclub now uh, with the business, so... They're, like, just considering calling in and just, like, going home because, like, you know, she already missed date night. She already missed, you know, a lot of things. So, it's like, it, I think it's better for them to pack it up and go home. But she's like, no, no, we'll wait a couple more hours. A couple more hours. Uh, eventually, they do call it. But moments when they're about to pull out, they see Elijah coming out of the club. Harper gets immediately mad because, again, Lopez being involved in his presence is already jeopardizing the investigation. Because, again, like, how was Harper there? Did Lopez know ahead of time? It kind of um, jeopardizes things a little bit. So... Uh, once they, once he, the, the, the guy they're looking for and um, Elijah leave, uh, Harper basically kicks out uh, Lopez so that she can go after um, or trail Elijah on her own. However, when Lopez gets out of the car, she knows there's someone else watching her. Uh, it's the the lawyer that Wesley had was briefly engaged to. That that lawyer. Um, yeah, so she hired um, hey, what's a, a PI to go trail. Lopez, just in case if, like, you know, she decides to come come near Elijah, which, there you go. Technically, by risk of association, yeah, she technically did. So, um, that means he already notified her that, like, yeah, Lopez has, has trailed Elijah. She broke the conditions of her agreement. So, they all meet back up at the station. The lawyer's still there, uh, already ha handing, their, ha handing their ass to them that, yeah, you're harassing Elijah. Like, he did nothing wrong. He went to a nightclub. What did he do wrong? It's like, well, yeah, but you can't really, like, what they know, like, she doesn't know. And even, like, Gray pleads with her for a bit, like, come on. You got to know that, you know, Elijah's playing something bigger here. He's got a bigger chess game in play. And she's like, I am just defending my client from the harassments of the police department. If you continue you continue this investigation or you continue stalking my client, I will proceed to take away all your badges. Um, Lopez gets to, they all get sent home. Gray kind of reprimands Lopez for, like, a brief second, but they all uh, head back home to go relax. Uh, we cut to the next morning. Lopez does apologize to Harper immensely about, you know, her mix-up. But Lopez admits that even though she was aware, they're like, yes, 
she shouldn't have done that. She knew ahead of time that Elijah could have had an involvement in this case and that she should have backed out. However, Harper's like, you know, you got to let this go. Like, we can handle this. We got you. Because, like, you know, you can't risk yourself. Like, you know, you can't put yourself down with the ship right now. And Lopez is like, I understand that, but, like, every day I wonder Elijah might make a move on either me or Wesley or, you know, even, God forbid, their son. And what happens then? She has she has a credible point there, and I do I do feel for her. And, like, you know, she wants to help out as much as she can, but in order for, like, Elijah to try and properly go away this time, she needs to follow things by the book. Um, so I think Lopez gets sent home early, uh, or maybe her shift already ends pretty quickly. I'm not sure. It's still daytime out there. Um, so she heads back home, uh, apologizes to Wesley for, you know, staying away and, like, you know, missing data and everything. Um, and then Wesley's like, you do realize you po you posted your doctor's appointment on the shared calendar, right? So, uh, yeah, we're having a baby again. And she's like, and, you know, uh, thankfully Wesley's understanding of, like, you know, I know this isn't what you want right now. And I know, like, with the Elijah stuff, this is, like, the worst time to be raising now two kids. But they can do it. They can do this. They're, they're, the, they're the dream team, which I'm, like, very sweet, very thoughtful. And, you know, thankfully, hopefully they'll kick some ass doing it, trying to also kick Elijah's ass. Also, I'm surprised they brought Brandon J. McLaren for, like, one scene without any lines. Like, he was just, like, just there, like, you know, you see him in the distance, and then he's gone. Which I'm, like, I'm pretty sure he got paid a pretty good amount of money just for that one scene. Anyway, um, heading back over to Ch um, Chen, and, um, Chen and Bradford, which I, I completely forgot about them for a second because that was the whole, like, the big thing I'm pretty sure Twitter's trending about right now. Uh, where, where was I going to go with that? Yeah, so... Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so, again, going back to the topic of them now knowing they're going to have sex that night, Lucy's like, well, now that we're riding together as a couple, this is the first time they're doing it, like, they should really work on... What are the parameters? Like, you know, we should, like, keep things how it was before. Maybe, like, just do a little variation. Tim's like, it doesn't matter to me. Like, you know, I can shut this off. Like, one, two, three. And, and Lucy's like, really? I made three mistakes on purpose, and you never corrected me on them. And Barbara's like, I knew them. I just, you know, you're, you're not a rookie anymore, so I don't really have to reprimand you about that. Uh, which I was, I was like, I thought Lucy was going to tease him for a second about like her looks or something, but no, she was just like teasing him on like, you know, his etiquette, his work etiquette and like how he prefers to want things done. Um, there was a funny scene with them. Um, uh, they're getting coffee and they're still talking about like, you know, Lucy, Lucy wants to give him a Lucy lesson, like how he gives Tim tests, which I'm like, that's interesting. I never thought of it like that, but like. Interesting, they're still coming up with things like, you know, five seasons in. Um, they get to, like, a marijuana sh um, shop owner uh, trying to, like, get a marijuana van seller off his street. And the guy stupidly forgets his keys outside, which I'm like, bruh. Ugh, these people are idiots. I'm sorry. So they arrest him for just not having the proper paperwork to sell on the streets. Uh, but it's a simple procedure of, like, you know, as long as you appear in court, we won't do your monk shot. We won't run your prints. Uh, but, however, he does uh, notice his earrings are missing. They're not anywhere to be found. Lucy can't find them. He threatens he threatens the, um, her for a bit. And, um, yeah, that kind of shakes um, Lucy up a little bit because, like, you know, she was so focused on, you know, trying to troll Tim that she forgot about doing her job correctly. And that, uh, you know, now that they lost a valuable piece of a person's per, uh, personal items, that this is, like, grounds to, like, report to IA. Which, also, another thing I forgot to mention, like, you know, now that we're talking about this, like I mentioned IA for a little bit. We have not seen uh, Wes's, fa um, Wes's father in like a while. Which, again, I understand that his son passed away. But again, this is like going back to like some of my critiques with season four was that they never even brought him up to like properly have some sort of episode where he acknowledges it or something like that. That was like, you know, the, the weirdest thing, like, you know. Like, there have been, there have, he could have had a cameo or somewhere. I really don't know. But like, not, them mentioning I am like, yeah, what, what did happen to Wes's dad, you know? I'm, I want to see his reaction, because, like, that would have been a great, you know, moment to, like, actually tackle into the emotion of, like, he's gone, but we never got that. So, I'm like, uh, this, this, this is a brief aside. It has something to do with the review. Uh, but they're looking for everywhere, the lockers, the car, trying to find the uh, the earrings, but they can't find anything. And, you know, Lucy's like, you got to tell IA. You got to make the report right now. You know, you, you can't give me special treatment. And Bradford's like, no, no, we're going to keep looking. We're going to keep searching. Don't worry about it. Um, but it, it gets assessed over to uh, Lucy's head. They're like, yeah, you know what? Maybe we should just call it a night. You know, just not even bother 
uh, with our date and just, you know, we'll reconvene in the morning. Um, so she's still acting like this. I, and I say acting like purposely. So, uh, even she tells tomorrow, like, you know, like they're still trying to figure out how this, um, this work life balance is going to go. Cause again, they're still not ready to properly announce it to everyone yet that, yeah, we're a couple, which I'm pretty sure by next week's episode, they probably will, but mild spoilers for later, but <laughs> that is something she's considering and thinking about, um, at the moment. But, um, yeah, so they, they, um, they ponder on that for a little bit. Uh, even Tim comes over that night where uh, he he's still pitching to her like yeah you know like you know we should look look at this angle again maybe, maybe we can we did we missed something a little bit and also it was sweet for them to have like a kind of like a mini hug like they're not at the kissing stage yet but they are like you know they do like each other um yeah however Lucy drops the ball and says yeah no you know what no there was never I never had problems with the earring the, the earrings were always always there I gave it to the guy afterwards so. Uh, yeah, I just did it to test you to see if you would actually really would file to Aya, which I'm like, Lucy, you could have gotten a whole big report written up if he actually did. I know you kind of knew lo low-key that, yeah, he was going to do, he wasn't going to do it, but I'm like, there was a risk. There was a risk, and you took it. But anyway. Uh, yeah, we, so heading back over, because, like, their, their storyline's about to inject with the other storyline that I forgot to finish. Um, so yeah, so we're back over in... The hospital where no one and and uh, Juarez are just taking stock of just everything, making sure the guys are right. Uh, already, Oscar's presence has already attracted so many people. Uh, I think there was an old hospital guard or someone who uh, was an ex-con. He got a second chance, uh, and he started attacking Oscar because they apparently shared a cell together when he was in prison. Which I'm like, damn, this guy ruined all of his rehabilitation for one punch. Hilarious. Um, also, the uh, boyfriend of. Oscar's daughter keeps popping into random rooms, acting all suspicious. I thought, honestly, he was banging a nurse. That's all I thought he was doing at first. Uh, but no, he's, he was actually going into, into patients' rooms, stealing their medication. Just, I'm like, dude, why are you taking so many pills that you don't even know what they do? Eventually, Juarez finds him, and he has a seizure with all the, what a basically, a near overdose. They managed to resuscitate him, but like even the daughter's like, wow, I literally have had the same taste in men like my mom. This is bad, right? And everyone's like, yep, <laughs> you totally do. You, sh you should really work on that kid. Uh, eventually, yeah, so they're, they're about to go into surgery. Everything's almost ready to go, but they go into Oscar's room, but, but they notice the, uh, the, 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 the office, the, the guard that was supposed to be watching him, taking a break, is like, yeah, he's, a, he's handcuffed to his cell. What can he do? And he, they just see him eating a burger in French, which, which I'm like, this is why you don't leave Oscar alone. He can be chained up in the in Alcatraz for all I care. You don't leave him alone. You really don't. But yeah, but in the store, they have to push the, the surgery back by another 12 hours. There's nothing they can really do. So um, Nolan and, and uh, Poirot um, opt in to take a late shift to like, go continue their um, the watchful eye over him, sadly. Uh, Bailey shows up to deliver Nolan an overnight bed, even giving Selena a little bit of like a toothbrush and a makeup bed, which I'm like, you know what? Bailey is mom goals. I'm saying that right now. I know I'm will no one and Bailey have ever have a kid. I don't really know. That's still a big, um, a big old question mark. But I do imagine like yes, there could be a future where like she would be the best mom in the world. I'm just saying that up front. But anyway, so picking thing back up. Um, to the to their story, like Nola's been trying to read a book while watching Oscar, but he's snoring like a freaking light, and he's like, I'm done with this. Um, Horace is, um, letting the other guard take a breather because, like, he just has a kid and he's not supposed to be here today, if you get that reference. Um, and so she decided to let him have a little sne uh, little snooze time. And, um, yeah, so they're just busy, just, you know, just keeping things eye out. But, however, when Nolan goes into Oscar's daughter's room, uh, she's packing her bag. She's changed her mind that, yeah, this isn't going to work. Um, my dad is always just, on every twist and turn, is trying to find a way to delay the inevitable. And it's just clear he doesn't really want to do this. Uh, but Nolan's like, you know what? Oscar is a piece of shit. He really is. But we're not trying to deny that to any sort of extent today. But what we can admit is that maybe very, 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 very deep down in his heart, he does care about you. So he, he does want to do this, but it's just his normal ways of, of patterns and actions that like prevent him from really expressing that. And, you know, even Selena has a heart to heart to him a little bit about like, you know, you do care about your daughter. And then, you know, you always do this, to like push people away before they can hurt you. And he's like, yep, that's exactly that's exactly it. You done here? 
<laughs> and even Selena's just resuming that whole like darkness thing about like, yeah, you know, you're uh, you're gonna die. You're gonna die. And that's just uh that's a big old fact that you're gonna have to accept. Um I think eventually we cut back to the next morning. Um, everything seems to be ready to go, but no one and Huara is meeting with the doctor again, but she's with someone else, claiming this to be like someone that's gonna be observing the procedure. And you had that, you know, that what was I gonna say? Yeah, that, you know, all's going to be well. Then, yeah, we'll get the surgery underway. But she acts a little jittery. She acts a little bit different. And the supposed doctor is not really acting like a doctor. So they look at, they look him in his credentials. He's not even a doctor. He's an ex-con that used to share a cell with Oscar. Which I'm like, Jesus Christ. How did everyone know Oscar was at the hospital today? Uh, that's a curious uh, question to be answered. But they will not answer. Um, so they verify. They try to separate enough to get a conversation going. It turns out... Uh, he and he and two other dude broke into the doctor's house the night before, and basically threatened her like if she does not kill Oscar on the operating table today, then then her, then her uh, husband and her son will die. Uh, so they have to find a way to isolate him long enough for them to try and save her. However, the problem is, is that once again to the elevator, it turns out that he's been calling them every half hour. So they only have ten minutes to go stop them, which uh, involved Lucy and Bradford, who are already on ship to go in uh, to find the house. They get in. Very, I honestly like the way they paced this one. I, I, I like that they split them up. They were like, it, the tensions were a little bit high, just a little bit. Um, but they managed to get both of them done. They managed to get both of them arrested. The family's safe. Um, and the plot is over again. And Asu was like, you know what? I appreciate you saving my life. But I am under emotional distress right now. I am not in the condition to be performing any medical exp expenditure right now. I should wait at least 48 hours before I even, even considered in the right mind space to undergo surgery. Which ours is like, great, we will do that. Uh, we will also tell every uh, con that ex-con that is out there in the streets right now that knows you that you're here. So have fun. And he's like, you're not serious, right? You're not serious, right? And, and no one's like, you know, okay. yeah. If Juarez doesn't do it, I will. Which is like, you know what? Let's get this over with. Uh, so the surgery is a success. Everything's done. Um, the daughter's ready to like live a happy new life, you know, with no problems from dear old dad, hopefully. But we will see, we will see Oscar again. We will see him. Even like the way Nolan and, and Selena leave him, leave him off. It's like, yeah, they will eventually cross paths again. When will that be? Hopefully later than sooner. But <laughs> anywho, everything's fine. Everything's tied up just nicely with the bow. Uh, but meanwhile, back over to Lucy and Bradford. Um, yeah, it's decided they're going to have to split up. They're going to have to go to another station and Lucy's going to take the fall because uh, Bradford has the high-ranking sergeant position right now. That's really the only thing. Oh, God, my throat. Oh, God. <coughs> oh, God, my throat. I was really stretching it to the T there. I really was. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Jesus. Uh, yeah, so... Lucy decides she's going to transfer to another division just to get away from Bradford so they can, they can date in peace. Uh, however, the most likely thing is that she's probably going to get a, a pretty bad ship because she's the newbie, uh, which is pretty much true. I mean, that, that means their uh, time of seeing each other will greatly decrease, uh, which which sucks, but like this is the only way they could do to like actually per to explore their relationship even further. However, Bradford comes quick, clean the gray, telling him um, everything that, like, yeah, we're in a serious relationship. This is something I want to really fight for. And I need to be out of her chain of command for this to be legit. And Gray's like, okay. I kind of saw this coming too, but guess what? We're going to do what we can to accommodate you both. Um, there's only one position with your qualification that is open right now. You're not going to like it. But, you know, Bradford says, I'll take it. Because he knows Lucy's worth it. So... They had to dinner that night at the, at her house, and he drops the news to her like, "Yeah, I am uh, going to be the official court liaison sergeant, which is basically a desk job." I cannot imagine Bradford behind a desk full time, and we're gonna see it. Which I'm like, okay, that's that's gonna that's gonna bring some funny scenarios. But I were what what's what's one thing you guys got, but you also didn't get to see is yes, finally after four and a half seasons. Lucy and Bradford finally have sex. You don't get to see it. You don't get to see it. But, you know, um, hopefully you'll get a morning after. That's the best we can get next week. But other than that, that was it for this week's episode of The Rookie. Again, great episode, you know, fulfilling the, the, um, the trend for stuff long in the making. 
You also got the return of Oscar, the, his annoyance returning again for the fifth time in a row or something along that, that lines. Um, getting to see the Elijah conflict approach a little bit differently, but in a different angle. Uh, with like realizing what's at play here, what's at stake for Lucy, uh, for Lopez and Wesley this time, this time around with this conflict. And yeah, this is a, it's just a big old question mark. Like, what is next? Like, what could happen next? Honestly, the the, the door is open for them to do anything they want to do, and that's what they, that that what always excites me about the rookies. Like, I'll never be able to uh, predict what is next for them. Uh, but yeah. Uh, for me, I'm going to give this episode two thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this week's episode of The Rookie. L let's have a conversation down below as always. But until then, I think that's going to do it for me today. So if you're unaware, this has been What's the Two for Max Chicks, reviewing every episode in the fifth season of The Rookie. If you want to know what we're doing normally on What's the Two, besides our rookie episode reviews. Um, tomorrow, we have a rookie Feds episode review. On Thursday night, we have our Walker episode review. And on, on Friday morning, we will have our Walker Independence episode review. Um, so stay tuned for them. Uh, but you, if you only care about The Rookie, you're in luck. We'll be back next week with another brand new episode review. So I'll see you then. But until then, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. And as always... Oh, wait, no, I forgot, I forgot my whole ending ring of What am I doing? Um, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like, favorite, share. Don't forget to ring the bell. And don't forget to uh, always uh, leave a comment. But until then, until next time, probably, I'm losing my voice again. Stay safe out there. Be good to each other. And as always, peace out.